Hello and welcome to this podcast, which is for day number 206. Our readings today are Jeremiah 9 and 10, Psalm 142, and John 20. Jeremiah was given perhaps the toughest job of any prophet. In chapter 7, God told him, Tell them all this, but do not expect them to listen. Shout out your warnings, but do not expect them to respond. Jeremiah 9 And Jeremiah speaks. If only my head were a pool of water and my eyes a fountain of tears, I would weep day and night for all my people who have been slaughtered. Oh, that I could go away and forget my people and live in a traveler's shack in the desert. For they are all adulterers, a pack of treacherous liars. Heading, Judgment for Disobedience. The Lord speaks. My people bend their tongues like bows to shoot out lies. They refuse to stand up for the truth. They only go from bad to worse. They do not know me, says the Lord. Beware of your neighbor. Don't even trust your brother. For brother takes advantage of brother, and friend slanders friend. They all fool and defraud each other. No one tells the truth. With practiced tongues they tell lies. They wear themselves out with all their sinning. They pile lie upon lie and utterly refuse to acknowledge me, says the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord of heaven's armies says. See, I will melt them down in a crucible and test them like metal. What else can I do with my people? For their tongues shoot lies like poisoned arrows. They speak friendly words to their neighbors while scheming in their heart to kill them. Should I not punish them for this, says the Lord? Should I not avenge myself against such a nation? Jeremiah speaks. I will weep for the mountains and wail for the wilderness pastures, for they are desolate and empty of life. The lowing of cattle is heard no more. The birds and wild animals have all fled. The Lord speaks. I will make Jerusalem into a heap of ruins, says the Lord. It will be a place haunted by jackals. The towns of Judah will be ghost towns, with no one living in them. Jeremiah speaks. Who is wise enough to understand all this? Who has been instructed by the Lord and can explain it to others? Why has the land been so ruined that no one dares to travel through it? The Lord replies, This has happened because my people have abandoned my instructions. They have refused to obey what I said. Instead, they have stubbornly followed their own desires and worshipped the images of Baal as their ancestors taught them. So now, this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says, Look, I will feed them with bitterness and give them poison to drink. I will scatter them around the world in places they and their ancestors never heard of. And even there I will chase them with the sword until I have destroyed them completely. Heading, Weeping in Jerusalem The Lord Speaks this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies says. Consider all this and call for the mourners. Send for the women who mourn at funerals. Quick, begin your weeping. Let the tears flow from your eyes. Hear the people of Jerusalem crying in despair. We are ruined. We are completely humiliated. We must leave our land because our homes have been torn down. Jeremiah speaks. Listen, you women, to the words of the Lord. Open your ears to what he has to say. Teach your daughters to wail. Teach one another how to lament. 
for death has crept in through our windows and has entered our mansions. It has killed off the flower of our youth. Children no longer play in the streets, and young men no longer gather in our squares. This is what the Lord says. Bodies will be scattered across the fields like clumps of manure, like bundles of grain after the harvest. No one will be left to bury them. This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom, or the powerful boast in their power, or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord, who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth, and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. A time is coming, says the Lord when I will punish all those who are circumcised in body, but not in spirit. The Egyptians, Edomites, Ammonites, Moabites, the people who live in the desert in remote places, and, yes, even the people of Judah, and like all these pagan nations, the people of Israel also have uncircumcised hearts. Jeremiah 10 Heading, Idolatry Brings Destruction Hear the word that the Lord speaks to you, O Israel. This is what the Lord says. Do not act like the other nations who try to read their future in the stars. Do not be afraid of their predictions, even though other nations are terrified by them. Their ways are futile and foolish. They cut down a tree, and a craftsman carves an idol. They decorate it with gold and silver, and then fasten it securely with hammer and nails, so it won't fall over. Their gods are like helpless scarecrows in a cucumber field. They cannot speak, and they need to be carried because they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of such gods, for they can neither harm you nor do you any good. Jeremia speaks. Lord, there is no one like you, for you are great and your name is full of power. Who would not fear you, O king of the nations? That title belongs to you alone. Among all the wise people of the earth and in all the kingdoms of the world, there is no one like you. People who worship idols are stupid and foolish. The things they worship are made of wood. They bring beaten sheets of silver from Tarshish and gold from Uphaz, and they give these materials to skilled craftsmen who make their idols. Then they dress these gods in royal blue and purple robes made by expert tailors. But you, Lord, are the only true God. You are the living God and the everlasting King. The whole earth trembles at your anger. The nations cannot stand up to your wrath. The Lord speaks. Say this to those who worship other gods. Your so-called gods who did not make the heavens and the earth will vanish from the earth and from under the heavens. Jeremia speaks. But God made the earth by his power, and he preserves it by his wisdom. With his own understanding he stretched out the heavens. When he speaks in the thunder, the heavens roar with rain. He causes the clouds to rise over the earth. He sends the lightning with the rain and releases the wind from his storehouses. The whole human race is foolish and has no knowledge. The craftsmen are disgraced by the idols they make, for their carefully shaped works are a fraud. These idols have no breath or power. Idols are worthless. They are ridiculous lies. On the day of reckoning they will be destroyed. 
but the God of Israel is no idol. He is the creator of everything that exists, including Israel, his own special possession. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. Heading, Coming Destruction The Lord Speaks Pack your bags and prepare to leave. The siege is about to begin. For this is what the Lord says. Suddenly I will fling out all you who live in this land. I will pour great troubles upon you, and at last you will feel my anger. Jeremiah responds, My wound is severe, and my grief is great. My sickness is incurable, but I must bear it. My home is gone, and no one is left to help me rebuild it. My children have been taken away, and I will never see them again. The shepherds of my people have lost their senses. They no longer seek wisdom from the Lord. Therefore, they fail completely, and their flocks are scattered. Listen. Hear the terrifying roar of great armies as they roll down from the north. The towns of Judah will be destroyed and become a haunt for jackals. Heading, Jeremiah's Prayer I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. We are not able to plan our own course, so correct me, Lord, but please be gentle. Do not correct me in anger, for I would die. Pour out your wrath on the nations that refuse to acknowledge you, on the peoples that do not call upon your name. For they have devoured your people Israel, they have devoured and consumed them, making the land a desolate wilderness. Psalm 142 is a poem to pray when discouraged. Psalm 142, a psalm of David regarding his experience in the cave, a prayer. I cry out to you, O Lord. I plead to you for your mercy. I pour out my complaints before you and tell you all my troubles. When I am overwhelmed, you alone know the way I should turn. Wherever I go, my enemies have set traps for me. I look for someone to come and help me, but no one gives me a passing thought. No one will help me. No one cares a bit what happens to me. Then I pray to you, O Lord. I say, you are my place of refuge. You are all I really want in life. Please hear my cry, for I am very low. Rescue me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Please bring me out of prison, so I can thank you. The godly will crowd around me, for you are good to me. Jesus' death did not mean that he stopped fulfilling scriptures. John 20 Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary, the woman from the village of Magdalene, came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon, also called Peter, and the other disciple, John, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, They have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and I, John, started out for the tomb. We were both running, but I outran Peter and reached the tomb first. I stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but I didn't go in. 
Then Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then I, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and I saw and believed. For until then we still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. And then we went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. The angels asked her, Dear woman, why are you crying? Because they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Jesus said to her, Dear woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Jesus said, Mary. She turned to him and cried out, Rabboni which is Hebrew for teacher. Jesus said, Don't cling to me, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary, the one from Magdalene, found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. That Sunday evening the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. He said, Peace be with you. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again he said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, We have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it until I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. He said, Peace be with you. Thomas, put your finger here, and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Instead, believe. Thomas exclaimed, My Lord and my God! Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him you will have life by the power of his name. That last verse is the verse that, that was the inspiration for our motto, that we have used for 30 years in our ministry. It is, The Word Unlocks Life. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, how wonderful that Jesus was raised from the dead, and how clear it is that this miracle happened Otherwise, the Jewish leaders and Pilate would have been only too glad to produce Jesus' body. 
but they could not. And Jesus said to Thomas, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Yes, Lord, we have not had the privilege of seeing you, and thank you for blessing us. Thank you for including us all those years ago in this blessing. And Lord, we are amazed at all the miracles that Jesus did, and these are written so that we might believe. Lord, be with us that we will believe fully and mature as your followers for the sake of Christ.